Okay, today I'm going to voice over this painting because uh, I posted it on YouTube and I was uh, got in trouble because there was music in the background which was a copyright violation. So uh, I was trying to enjoy some very low music but it didn't work out. So um, anyway, today it's a 9 by 12 or an 8 by 10 black canvas. I painted it with black gesso and what I'm doing here is just making a little moon. Uh, I did put some, actually mix the black acrylic paint with some dark blue, uh, Prussian blue or, or thalo blue, and that'll give it some blue look to it. So I'm putting in a little, uh, I'm putting in a little, uh, moon here with my finger. And what I'll probably do is just blend it out here in a second with the brush just to make it kind of soft on the edges and see how that goes. Well, it turned out pretty good. It's a pretty good painting. Um, I must apologize because I, uh, I'm moving around a little here, but <clears throat> I don't have it focused in, so sometime it might get blurry, unfortunately. But uh, I'm just taking some color here from my mountains. I'm taking some, uh, looks like some burnt sienna and some some van dyke brown maybe some raw umber i don't know for sure it's just a dark brown and i'm going to add a little bit of white into it and get a good mix maybe a little yellow ochre i'm going to cut the knife get a little bit on the edge of the knife and then i'm just going to find a place and then uh, the highlights are coming from the moon side obviously i'm just going to pull in one direction and angles on it works pretty good and you just start at the top with that little bit of paint on the knife and you can use whatever knife I like this one it's got a kind of a good design to it you can get knives at any art store palette knives just pulling down the highlight side and I'm not even worried about the, the shadow side yet we'll come back in and uh, put that in after the after the highlights are done. You can do it the other way too if you want. I just find it easier to put the, the highlights in first. Now if you're doing this on a white canvas and you do the whole mountain out with you know a dark color, then it's probably easier to do the either highlights or shadows, you know, because you already have your mountain in. Now I'm just guessing where the mountain is because it's all dark. Well, it turns out works pretty good actually. Okay, I'm gonna grab another peak and pull it down. And that comes over to the side. And that looks pretty good. And I'm just kind of coming down with the knife, barely touching, making it break. You make it break, then, then it uh, gives it some depth and pushes it back. Okay, Here comes another peak. And you can just practice these on a blank canvas over and over and again until you know, once you get them down, they're pretty easy. And it kind of gets flatter the farther you get to the bottom. And I don't overmix the paint here because it gives you all these little variations in the paint. There, that looks pretty good. Okay. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to pull that down a little further there. But, and okay, You don't want to press too hard because you don't want it to really... You want the paint to break. And you can tap that on and kind of just let your hand jiggle when you're doing this that kind of just sail that stands out on a black canvas it's pretty cool how that works and you, these are easy just paint them black and let them dry and they dry fast with gesso and I use acrylic sometimes but apparently gesso is made for to hold it's designed to hold uh, uh, paint better oil paint lasts longer okay and now I'm mixing some blue just uh, some of that thalo blue with some white for my shadow colors and I might have mixed a tiny little bit of brown in there too. I'm just gonna pull in the opposite direction and that'll kind of give it some, sh the shadow side, reflected light. Pulling down, pretty simple, okay. 
I'm going to continue to put the shadows in here and just pull in the opposite direction and just pull them down just to see how far you want to, what direction you want the mountain to go. There. So it kind of just jumps right out of that black canvas, doesn't it? Looks cool. I'm just pulling very lightly, getting that blue. That blue looks good on there. And trying to uh, get my mountain done here, okay? And I'm just gonna work on some more little, very, you know, shadows and just trying to fine tune it a little bit here is all. And sometimes you gotta have the little part of the knife to get in some of these areas as it gets pretty tight. You could come in and use a liner brush or another a brush on that too if you wanted. I find when you use a palette knife, it's really simple to do mountains. And I think they turn out the best. I just did a video on palette, a palette knife and a brush on how to paint mountains. It's available too. You can find on my page there. Uh, it's a shorter one. It just, it's on a white canvas board. And I just did the mountains and similar to this one kind of actually and just the mountains and I did one with that knife and then I used a, a, a brush on the other one and they both turned out pretty good uh, you can do a lot with a knife you can make trees and you can do anything land and it's clouds uh, you can do paintings with just a palette knife so so we're going in here and I'm just yeah, and some more detail to it. You don't need to spend a ton of time. You can, you can piddle them to death, basically, if you work them too much. But uh, that one's looking pretty good. And the only thing I wish I probably should have done is maybe not had it almost in the middle like that, but maybe over to the off just center. Just it is off center a little bit, I think. But uh, it's it's okay. This is kind of just teaching how to do mountain, an easy little mountain landscape. And here I am just doing some more. Uh, fine touch on there on the mountains okay, and pull again with some highlight on there you can come back in and you get too much blue you come back with some more highlight get it over the top of it or if you get too much highlight you can come back in with your shadow color until you get your mountains where you like them and now I'm just softening the bottom here I fast forwarded it a little ways and uh, making it kind of misty and at the bottom because you want your mountains to be more uh, distinct at the top and then at the bottom you can kind of pull towards the angles tap pull and that just creates a, a little bit of a mist and it makes the next layer push it pushes it back for the next layer okay i'm just softly touching or you can pull you can pull and this um, is keep in mind this is a dry canvas so uh, it takes a little more work but it Looks pretty good there kind of makes it look like it's floating up there the sun or the moon's hitting it and and then it'll get ready for the the next layer which i think i'm going to put some trees on here and this is a obviously a night painting but you can still add more color uh, just make it look funner it may not be realistic color but that's all right now i'm taking a fan brush and i got some green and some blue and probably a little black maybe some crimson on the brush and I'm just going to take and mix up some of that color. And there's some blue there. Might just be some blue on there. Okay. And I'm just going to tap down and make some tree indications. Tapping down with the brush. Okay. And that goes pretty good. Tap down, tap down. There, and you can kind of see how they're kind of sitting back. After you've kind of taken and softened the base of the mountain, then they stand out a little bit better. It kind of pushes them back, the mountain back and makes the trees look like they're in between there. But yeah, that looks pretty good. And then just going across, going across here and doing that with the brush and just pulling down. And here I just uh, did a little editing and speeding up the canvas here. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do this with the trees. Okay, and so those are my little distant trees that are in there. And the next thing 
Uh, looks like I'm doing a little more touch up on the mountain, maybe putting some dark in there. Here and there, or maybe some more blue, but looks good. That might have been a little more highlight in there. I think the mountains are good. Now, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm taking a little bit of titanium white on the brush and I'm pulling on the base of those trees. And what it does is it, it makes the trees look like there's a little separation between the base of them too, just like the mountain. Everything on the bottom, if you put mist it out and put another layer in front of it, it'll just make it look like different layers getting pushed back. So, and you just take a little bit of white. And you can use a fan brush or this is like an old one inch brush, I think. And you can just kind of come in and, and do that and it'll kind of work on the base of your trees. Okay, so next here we're gonna I'm not sure what I'm saying. I'm sure I'm talking about the light and which way the light's coming from. So we'll kind of come in here and go in and see what's up next. Mixing up some paint here. Okay, some greens. I got some bright green, some sap green, and I'm just going to make some foreground land. Okay, I'm going to just tap that in. It's pretty dark, but you can, it'll kind of show up on the canvas here. And I don't, you know, as you use green coming forward, it'll push green as a, you know, you're, as you're coming forward, uh, the more vibrant the colors you use, you see more colors. And green is a color you don't want to use in the distance too far out because it won't push anything back. Once you start using green, everything comes forward. So here the green is being used and I'm just tapping it in with a fan brush, loading it up. I'll do a better job with my palette. And sorry about the blurriness. I really like this painting. I wish I would have focused and locked the screen in uh, so it'll get better there when I before I started. And black canvases are hard to film because you get glare on them and, and things. And I don't want too much glare because I want, I want you to be able to see it. But I'm just tapping, super easy to do. You know what I'm going to do here is I got the green in. I'm just adding some blue. I think it's phthalo blue. It could be Prussian blue. Prussian blue is super dark. And that's just going to give for the water. Okay. And you kind of want your water to look like it's the land to kind of come farther. And then as it gets towards you, go down. Kind of arches. You don't want the water to go uphill. Okay, and I'm just putting some land or some, some blue in. And then I'll put in some, we can add some white here, and that'll give us, you know, some water. I'm just trying to, trying to, this is just a little flat brush or a bright brush. I don't know. It's just, I've got a lot of brushes and just grab something with an edge on it so I can kind of do that. And then I'm going to come in and just blend it in a little more. And we'll see how the next, next part goes here. Okay, I think now I'm just tapping in a little a little uh, separation, little land, you know, where the water line is. Just tap, and I'm trying to get colors you can see. And, uh, you know, I just, this painting here, I just made up in my mind. I just started painting. I didn't have a sketch or anything. So you can use a sketch or you can use a picture. Sometimes it's easy if you find a good picture to use. And all I was trying to do here was a sky, a moon, a mountain, some distant trees, and then coming forward with some land, and then throw some water in there, because... These are fun, fun, easy paintings to do. And every once in a while, somebody might like it and you can make some money off of them. Uh, okay, I'm cleaning my brush on my paper towel in the back there. And let's see what we're gonna be doing here next. Now I'm gonna take, I got some white on there and I'm just gonna go back and forth and just create some water. And you can use a fan brush for this. This might be a tiny little fan brush I bought but I'm just getting some color in there to give it some, and I'm kind of going back and forth, but kind of in a rocking, a little bit of a rocking stroke, and just creating some water in there. Not super bright, that middle is a little bright, but maybe that's the reflection of the moon coming over. And then just going back and forth, leaving dark spots. You gotta leave the dark in there, or you won't have, uh, it just won't look right. You can't kill all your dark. 
or you could use, geez, I could have used a, I could have used a palette knife with this too. I didn't think about it, but you can come in and make your water with a palette knife and just get a little bit on the edge and just scrape down. That works good too. Okay, this is working pretty good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm editing this from my, I'm, at, I'm away at work in my hotel, so I had the fan on and it would sound echoey, and I don't have my microphone, but this sounds pretty good with, there's nobody screaming in the halls, and there's, uh, the fan doesn't come in and, and cause any issues. I'm going to have a little sip of coffee. Okay, looks like the water's getting done there, and that doesn't look too bad. And I'm going to take and I am grabbed a, a one-inch brush here, or a, can't really tell, soft brush, and I'm just kind of blending that, the water in a little bit, just trying to soften it, okay? Because it's kind of far away. It's not super close. And that's just a little soft little blender brush, a little very fine hairs on it, and that works good. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to pull into the land and mess up the land. But if you do, you can come back in with a the brush or a knife. You can put the land in with a knife too. And what I've done with this painting is, I've taken and I've this the piece of wood I have, and I hook that to my easel. And then I take and I put tape on the back. I use blue tape, the blue masking tape and then it, I put four corners and two in the middle and it seems to stick. I haven't any problems yet. And here I'm just doing some little, it's like I might be throwing in some dark spots or some highlights with a little, little brush there just to, oh, okay, I'm going to try to create reflections in the mountain here. And uh, um, I'm just kind of trying to make some colors from the mountains and maybe that'll reflect into the water. And we'll see. It turned out okay. Kind of blurry at the end, but uh, I wasn't going to do it, and then I did. So I'm going to speed it up here for a second. Okay, I'm just kind of going fast here and, and kind of speeding it up. Da -da 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 -da. And it doesn't need to be perfect. You can kind of tell that there's a little reflection of the mountains in there. And I'm pulling down there and going to the side, and that kind of blurries it out. And I can come back over with a knife later and put some water lines in it or we can just leave it like that. I'm not sure what I did here, but again, this is just something quick and easy and um, hopefully you can, you know, try some of this. Mainly the mountain is what I was trying to do and I like these black canvases. Okay, now I'm going in, slowing down again and I'm going into some trees. I'm just using a fan brush. Let me create some, just some trees, some pine trees, spruce trees, whatever. And I'm just going back and forth, touching back and forth with the brush and just making some piney looking trees. That looks good. Very good. Coming down, reloading the brush. This is just a light green, some blue and green. And I don't want them. They could be super dark and they probably would. If they were too dark, they wouldn't stand out in the sky. So I kind of went in between just so you could see them. Uh, and I'm just coming in and pushing down. When you're doing like trees and things or objects you, in nature, yeah, perspective wise, it looks better if you have odd numbers. So you do what you want, but I always try to, you know, if I'm gonna do trees, I try to get an odd number in there. Okay. Looking pretty good. We got two on that side. And I don't want to, today I didn't want to put them and kill my mountain, so I left them open. Sometimes I'll put them in front of the mountain and stuff. But all I'm doing is tapping down. And I'm just taking the side of the brush and tapping, push the paint in. Again, with trees, like mountains, just practice them and they get easier. You can move the brush around, and there's so many ways you can do trees. But this would be a fun painting to redo. And, uh, and and redo this one again and maybe have a waterfall in it at the bottom. A nice bright waterfall and some cool colors and stuff. But kind of want a little bit of a glow in the trees. And you know where the light's coming from. And I don't remember if I took and darkened the edges or if I, if I put highlights on the trees here. But uh, anyway, I'm going to speed it up again here. 
I'm getting better at my editing. Okay, now I'm speeding it up. Da, 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 da. Okay, and I'm gonna put some, pretty quick here, we're gonna put some, uh, I'm just fine tuning this trees a little bit. Okay, there, and I'm putting in some lines for some, I just took some white and little brown and maybe some sienna or some brown and make that mixture I had and I just put some trunks in there with a liner brush or whatever and you just put little don't you you, know, you want to have little areas where you can see because the branches stick out with the trees so you don't want to have one straight line all the way down just two little spots here and there now I'm taking some white and blue some of that shadow color and I'm making some lines in the water so that's going to push the reflection of the mountain or whatever <laughs> that turned out to be uh, that's going to push that back okay You just take it on the top of the brush, or on the top of the, I always call the the palette knife a brush, but you just take it on the, you know, just get a little roll either on the top or the bottom of the blade and just go back and forth. I'm just trying to work on the edges. Okay. This is a great way to hold a, a canvas panel because this is a canvas panel and it's so thin. If I put it on my, that, and I like to be able to paint without anything getting in the way. I don't have any paint border tape on this. So sticking it on that piece of wood works just awesome. And you can put bigger pieces on there. I was painting one the other day and I got done and it fell down and scratched it all up. And <laughs> I had to kind of pick it back up and redo it after I'd finished filming. But uh, yeah, now we're just finishing up the water. And uh, yeah, you can do these night paintings. You can do uh, Northern Light paintings. I'm going to do one of these. I'm gonna do another one of those. Those are awesome. You just get the, the, when you do those, you do have to have some medium on the canvas. It's gotta be a wet canvas uh, with some clear medium or, or, or a clear medium on there and, and dark blues and phthalo greens and crimsons and Indian yellows. You can use whatever you want. Okay, um, now what I'm doing here, I'm cleaning up. Okay, now what I did is I, I fast forward a little bit and I've got some yellow on here, I just mix some yellow. It looks like a little yellow just for some highlights on the trees. And you could have used white with the green color to make them stand out. I just use a little yellow. Now I'm kind of coming in and just tapping. Don't overdo, keep that base color in there. Otherwise they'll get flat on you really fast and they won't look good. But these don't look too bad. Tap it in there. Just making some trees, one, two. It almost looks like I've got four trees there, and I usually, that's an even number, so maybe I did it differently this time. Okay, yeah, that doesn't look too bad, though. And then I'm going to put some down on the bottom, the trees, and you can put some land. And see how you're, with that white underneath those distant trees, it pushes them back, and there's your foreground. So you got the, the layers, you got the mountain, you got the distant trees, layer two, and then you got the foreground trees layer. So you got three layers, and then you've got the water, four. Yeah, so um, dimension, that's dimension to your painting and distance. That looks good, you know. And this one looks pretty, I like this painting, actually. It's, it looks better when it's when they dry, they get a little darker. And all, when I'm usually with all my paintings, when I'm done with them is all take and put a, a gloss over them when they dry and that protects them from fading and gives them a little sheen. I use a gloss from a, oh, I can't remember what the company's called, but I just go in after they're dry. And now I'm going to add in some more trunks here. So I might have covered them up or I just I don't want to do them with a knife. So you can do whatever you want when you're painting, you know, and just a little bit on the edge, just like cut it out a little bit on the edge and just barely touch. And after a while, you'll get good at this. Now this painting took about 40 minutes. Very relaxing. Painting's fun. It's something to do. You're never bored. Oh, there's my another tree. That gives me five. <laughs> Maybe put another one over there. Oh, no. And I think I just threw some... Just some branches and stuff in there, just to you can do whatever you want. 
Okay, now I'm putting some other more trees in there. So making a little more distance, it's going to push those other trees maybe back a little bit. But here's some trees that are on the that are on the uh, a little closer, and these are just some stick trees. Maybe they're dead. They don't have any leaves on them. Okay, and I'm going to put one laying down that fell. I see. I don't know. I just decided to do that. I don't. Okay. Getting close to being done here. Got those trees and just tapping with that color. It looks like it's some, again, just some trunk color, probably some brown and white. You can make trunk color with dark brown, like a dark seed, a uh, Van Dyke brown, raw, um, uh, raw burnt umber uh, is good. Burnt sienna has got some red in it. You can use that for cabins and highlights and a little redder. I'm getting my liner brush here so I can make some twigs on these. And when you get a lot of paint on there, you know, like this one, uh, you got to get some, you got to get some medium on there, paint thinner, or else it won't flow, or you got to wait for it to dry. If you wait for it to dry, that's, that's fine. Uh, they'll come right off, and you still need some paint thinner to get these little branches and twigs to flow, but uh, anytime you want to do some really good highlights, or some really good details with branches. Sometimes it's better to let the whole painting dry and come back in and work on it later. Uh, today, in this painting, I just don't have the time to do that. I didn't want to come back and do that. I like to finish them all in one setting with the camera angle and everything. So when I do paint uh, and I post these kind of, hopefully it's a tutorial or just enjoyable to watch, uh, I like them all in one shot. And then it's, it's easier to do. And I'm just putting some limbs in, you can see on that tree. It's a good little tree. And then I'm gonna put some reflections in the water. I didn't put the, the pine trees in the water. You don't always have to do that. Maybe they're too far back. And uh, maybe the water was too rough to see them. Okay. And that, I put a little stick there, like maybe that tree laying down, that's where he broke off of and fell to the to the right there, and there's his stump where he came from. So it would have been a big tree, and I'm just trying to highlight it and make it look kinda, kinda real there. Again, this one I had to voice over because uh, I had music in the background, and the YouTube copyright police caught me and decided I couldn't post it anywhere. I had one that they I did that had music, and they they said I couldn't post it in only Russia for some reason, but everywhere else was okay. And uh, choose, I was just listening to my music in the background. Really light, you can barely hear it. You know, usually you can't hear it with, with, the, with the mic. So I might uh, maybe turn it down a little more, put an earbud in or something on my right ear. <laughs> it's fun to listen to music when you're painting. Huh? Sometimes I'll listen to some soft stuff, some relaxing stuff, or sometimes I want some rock and roll or whatever. And I'm just putting some highlights and detail in. Again, I'm sorry, I didn't focus it in that. It's a little blur. There, nice and, there's where it gets nice and uh, focused. Um, it's a good little painting. If you like this painting and you want it, let me know. I'll get it to you. A lot of times people like them and then I end up uh, we negotiate a very fair price if they want it on their counter or their wall. Yeah, you can shoot me a message. And I'm just pulling up, making little indications in the grass. You can pull stuff around with the blade. I like doing grass with a pellet knife. And I've got one that's really flexible and, and I use to do long bits of grass. And you just kind of bang it on the canvas and it makes really perfect grass without using a liner brush and it lands on top of stuff so it doesn't mix if you want to do wet on wet like this most of my paintings are all wet on wet this one here is kind of wet on wet i didn't let the layers dry but the background was dry and you see you don't need to have a wet canvas it um, but if you're going to blend a sky in Oh, it's really nice. The moon was pretty simple, but if you're going to blend the sky in and diff different colors, uh, I recommend using a wet, uh, a medium white, a white medium, or a clear medium if you don't want to change your value, your colors. And it's uh, works out good. 
just doing some more little indications here. Doing that other tree as it comes down in the water. <laughs> just pulling them down. And again here, I was just speeding it up. I'm just putting the reflections of the dead trees in the water. And I just, there it goes, da, 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 faster, faster, faster. You're probably getting bored. Use your finger and zoom through like when I'm watching YouTube videos. I don't always, I barely watch the whole thing. I come in and I'll watch segments of it. Go back through. This voiceover is working actually all right. There, now I'm just taking and trying to cover Put water over the trees to push them back. Like there's little things happening in the water. And it kind of looks all right. It's a good little scene. I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, I might be back to slow-mo again. And again, I'm just working on the, a little more on the, maybe the, the land. I'm tapping in some. Oh yeah, I think I'm just putting in some land to give a little, maybe some dirt. Just taking brown. Brown works good for dirt. <laughs> okay, trying to get a little roll of paint on there. Boy, that knife works good. Yeah, and I see I'll give a little ridges back there. Yeah, there's a little dirt back there. And I'm just pulling down or to the side, whatever you want to do. You want it to flow in the same direction, you know. Angles are important when you're making land, too. It can't go one way and one way. And, and uh, here, let me pull that up a little bit. And I think this one's getting close. Maybe I make a little path there. Is that what I'm doing? Okay, yeah, a little path. like And just scraping with the knife. If you're making a path, uh, perspective-wise, you want... As it gets closer, it needs to get bigger. So the farther from you it is, the smaller. As it gets closer, you widen it out. Okay, and that's all we're doing there. A little path down to the water. Come down there and do some fishing or kick your feet up. Lots of color on here. That, that phthalo blue in the water and that white looks good. Might have mixed a little Prussian blue in there too, but... Uh, Okay, and then what I'm doing here is once you put a path in, you gotta come back and kinda, to make it sit back, you wanna bring some grass into the edges so it looks like it's sitting underneath the grass. Okay, and that pushes it back and sets it back and, and the you know the grass is gonna grow over some of the trail and stuff. Nobody's walking on it. Okay. And so 33 minutes in, I'm looking at this app I have for editing and I've never used the voiceover before so this is actually pretty fun I had okay and now I'm just taking and put a little highlight on the dirt a little bit when you're doing that you don't want to kill all your you don't want to kill your your dark because then it gets flat black dark light against dark dark against light that's what you want to have and thanks for watching that's it have a great day and uh, we'll try to get some more out there. Thanks again.